May today there be peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Doreen Coates, who lived out St. Teresa's prayer. With grace and kindness and a great sense of humor that could catch you off guard <coughs> and a beauty and a love of life and a love of God and Jesus Christ, her Savior, and a love of her family, who she was so proud of, seeing who they were and who they were becoming and how they were making the world a better place. We celebrate Doreen on this day. That she has triumphed. That she has lived this life well. And that she has earned her great reward. And so we come together in grief acknowledging our human loss. And we pray that God will grant us grace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Doreen Coates. Before she was ours, she is yours. For all that Doreen has given us to make us what we are, for that of her which lives and grows in each of us, and for her life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As now we offer Doreen back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness. And give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another. Make us faithful to serve one another. And give us to know that peace and joy which is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Who when his disciples asked him how they should pray, he said, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, in this time of worship and celebration, we'll be singing a few songs. They're located in the hymnals that are in your pews or maybe just under your seat. If you turn to page 314, our first hymn is In the Garden. As you think about uh, Doreen and her love uh, for the garden, love for God's creation, let us sing this song with thankful hearts for all that God has done and is doing. If you are comfortable or able, would you please stand together and sing hymn 314 in the garden.
She wrote her whole life. When I asked her, when did, when did Jesus become important to you? She didn't skip a beat. She said she was eight years old. She remembers the exact moment, the exact time, where she was. And for every day of her life, she's been practicing how to follow him, how to, how to love more deeply, how to pray for more and more people every day, how to sing these songs, how to, how to preach a sermon by kneeling in the dirt and planting a seed and watching it grow. She's been practicing her faith. And her faith has brought her to heaven. And these scriptures that we're about to hear have been formational in her life. She probably could recite this Psalm 23 by heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. And now I share with you the words from 1 John chapter 4. And I want you to listen to these words, and I want you to know, to, to, to ask yourself, did Dory live this out? <laughs> did Dory understand this with every fiber of her being? Listen to these words. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who's, who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent His Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because He first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from Him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. I think Doreen understood that. <laughs> As she nursed strangers to help, and she cared for her kids, friends, and their friends, and she loved everybody who came into her presence. Do you think that she understood that when she was loving them, she was experiencing God in her presence? She's been 
practice inner faith their whole life. And so let me read to you about the reward. From the Gospel of John, chapter 14, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
God say amen? amen? We lift up this prayer. When I say these words, Lord, in your mercy, would you please respond, bless our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord our God, making known our heart's desire for Dory. God of our journey, you have called us to follow in the way of Christ even to death. By the victory of the cross, lead Doreen through death to resurrection, where Christ has gone before. Lord, in your mercy, bless our prayer. Righteous God, you call us to judgment, the living and the dead, to the place where right and truth prevail. Examine us with love and show Doreen your mercy, for without it, none of us may stand. Lord, in your mercy, bless our prayer. Saving God, you have promised salvation to all who trust in you. Bring Doreen with all your saints to your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, bless our prayer. Ever living God, you have promised new life to all who are found in Christ. Clothe Doreen with the life of your Son, whom not even death could hold. Lord, in your mercy, bless our prayer. Eternal God, all our days depend on you, for you are the giver of all good gifts. Grant Doreen the life of your eternal joy and peace. Lord, in your mercy, bless our prayer. Eternal God, we pray for ourselves as we pray for Doreen. We stand where earth and heaven meet, where life is brought to death, and death is made the gates to glory. Deliver us from fear and doubt, from despair and unbelief, and bring us to the light of your presence. Grant us that peace which the world cannot give, so that we, with Doreen, may trust in you and find our life in you. We make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Savior in life and death, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to open your hymnal to page 377. And I invite you to sing together. It is well with my soul. If it is comfortable for you to stand, I invite you to stand as you sing.
87. Went to be with her Lord Wednesday, December 14, 2016. She was preceded in death by her husband of 64 years, Donald. And her parents, Harry and Dora Bazile. Her sister, Lila Kemet Greenfield, and brother, Harold Bazile. She will be lovingly remembered by her sons, David and Marcia Coates, Doug and Deborah Coates, Dean and Joan Coates, grandchildren Todd Coates, Tanya and Jeff Yonker, Alexis and Augustine Manz Can you say it? Manzanares, thank you. Olivia Coates, Melissa and Martin Dredge, Jared Coates, five great grandchildren, brothers Lyle and Edna Bazile, Richard and Judy Bazile, along with many nieces, nephews, and extended relatives. The prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. gift it is to receive the words of Joan and Barb, Doreen's beloved daughter-in-law and Doreen's beloved friend, I'm going to say sister. said he had to leave because he just couldn't take any more of mom's fussing and baby talk over them. <laughs> Doreen just loved babies and small children, and not just her own. She often got into trouble by tripping over something because she just couldn't take her eyes off of a precious child. There was never a time when she was too busy to babysit. She would just drop what she was doing and take them in her arms. Later, when she was in assisted living, she just lived for the visits from her grandchildren, and especially the great-grandbabies, who called her Grandma Gigi for great-grandma. Those visits made her happy for the whole day. She was special to all of us here, and in many different ways. Once you were her friend, you were her friend for life. She took such joy in the company of people. She made you feel so special when you were with her. She truly knew how to live in the moment. Though I never got to see her in action, I believe that this trait of loving people must have made her an awesome nurse, a position she held for over 40 years. Doreen came from humble 
beginnings, born a Uper in Iron Mountain, Michigan. She spent a lot of her formative years on a farm, playing with the animals and with her younger brother, Lyle. Later, her father moved the family to Traverse City, where he worked at the state mental hospital. Mom finished high school there, and then came down to Grand Rapids to go to the Butterworth School of Nursing, where she graduated in 1950. <coughs> Shortly afterwards, she met Don while at a dance, and they were inseparable after that. They married in 1952, and soon the baby started coming. Mom quit working then, so she could devote herself to her family. She eventually went back to work after Dean started first grade. He remembers mom making a cookie sheet sized pie every Saturday. It was then used for their lunches during the week. He said he was surprised that the other kids were jealous that he got to have pie in his lunch. Didn't every mom make pies on Saturday? No, he had a special. While the boys were still young, she had to leave them for a while with Don while she traveled down to Ann Arbor to care for her mother, who had developed a tumor on her spine. Mom spent the next one to two weeks there as her private nurse, again, putting the family first and giving them her very best. I'll bet Don was glad to welcome her back home. <laughs> Mom had a silly side as well which made her so much fun to be around. She easily laughed, especially at herself with her goofballs. She had a funny way of saying whoop whenever she tripped or dropped something. She often got word pronunciations mixed up, such as saying, you can get it cheaper at Casco, or my husband has Alzheimer's. Even though we correct her, she just seemed to like her way better. Her boys always had to listen to Dave, Doug, Dean, whenever she was calling them. Sometimes Don even got thrown in there, too. I guess she just hated leaving people out. Living through the Depression must have really made an impression on her. She spent the rest of her life saving money wherever she could, and sometimes in very creative ways. For instance, when we moved her out of her condo, we were amazed at how many Velveeta boxes she had covered with contact paper to make them pretty, of course. And then she used them for so many different things. I mean, she must have had over 30 of them stashed around the house. The dollar store was her favorite place to shop, followed closely by Yonkers. That is because they always had great sales, plus they allowed you to use multiple coupons. She never went anywhere without them. <laughs> we believe she was on a personal basis with the clerks there, probably for a number of reasons. <laughs> she loved to shop and would go there for hours with her friends, laughing and talking all the way. She could easily outlast me on annual Christmas outings. Though she was frugal with herself, she was more than generous with her family and friends, and also anyone else who was in need. While in retirement, her and Dad enjoyed many years of great adventures. She was always willing to try something new if it meant spending time with friends or family. Poor Dad would often complain about getting dragged to something when all he really wanted to do was just sit and watch golf on TV. <laughs> Mom always insisted that it wasn't good for them to sit around all the time and that it would be best if they got out and had some fun. And Dad, always the gentleman, went along with his beloved bride because deep down he knew she was right. <laughs> as much as they loved to travel to their place in Venice, Florida, or to other places such as Norway or Panama, they always looked forward to coming home again. Mom couldn't bear to be away from her grandbabies for too long. As Dan, Dad began his journey into the land of dementia and then Alzheimer's disease, Mom switched gears from devoted wife to caregiver. She gave such good care to him, encouraging activities, exercise, and good nutrition to keep him as healthy and as happy as she could. Eventually, his needs outweighed her ability, and she had to move him to a nearby home with assisted care. Doreen lovingly fulfilled her wedding vow until death do us part by visiting him each day for the three and a half years he was there feeding him lunch and making sure he was well cared for. After 
dad's death, mom went down to Florida one last time to take some time for herself and eventually say goodbye to the people and memories she had made. By then, her Parkinson's disease had been diagnosed, and it was making it hard for her to live alone. That winter, she had help from her good friend, father, and along with the three boys and their wives. We helped her go through stuff, fix things, and get her mobile home ready to sell. Soon after she arrived home, we convinced her it was time to move somewhere where she could get more help. So she chose to move into the Holland Home System, where she could be close to her friend and help her father. Poor mom, we had to move her four times in two years. It was not easy for us, but it was especially hard for her, as each vase, doily, and picture had a special memory for her, and she just hated to part with them. I had the privilege of being her caregiver two summers ago. Since we were both in the healthcare field, I felt I could more easily talk to her in a language that she could understand. With each difficulty that would come up, I would collaborate with her on a way to either get around it or just learn how to deal with it. Uh, we spent a lot of time that summer going to doctor appointments, touring nursing homes, going through her stuff, again, <laughs> shopping, or just enjoying a cup of tea and having a good talk. I discovered she and I were a lot alike, and I considered her as close as my own mother. Now that she's longer with us, no longer with us, she's, what stands out most to me is that her family and friends were the most precious thing to her. She was the historian in the family and knew so much about people that she had never met. She was diligent in keeping in touch with most everyone, calling each of us weekly or whenever we crossed her mind. We truly felt loved by mom, and I'm convinced that we are all better people by having her influence in our lives. In closing, we would like to thank you, Pastor Dean, who lovingly visited her while she was in assisted living. It really boosted her spirits and helped her stay in touch with her church family. And we also want to thank you for your unwavering support and time spent with all of us at Faith Hospice on Mom's last day. It truly meant so much to all of us, and your words of comfort were very most welcome. called me and asked me if I'd be willing to say a few words here today. And I said, well, I'm really not a good speaker. Uh, I don't, but I'd love to do it. So I, I wrote something up, and that's what you're going to read to me now. Uh, I met Don and Doreen when my husband, Don, and I moved into our first home on Denver Dog in the fall of 1955. We, it, our home was right next to theirs. David was about seven months old, and I seem to remember that Doreen had baked something for me. Uh, no surprise, she continued to do that the rest of her life. Uh, the four of us felt very comfortable with each other. The fall of 56, on the due date of our first child, the four of us were, went to see a movie downtown, and uh, Linda came three days later. Believe me, I wasn't prepared to be a mother, how could days be so filled? I could hardly empty the bathroom. Um, <laughs> but Doreen assured me that I would be all right. I wasn't so sure. She gave me tips on how to schedule things, about keeping my house clean, and how to cut down on stress. God was a part of both of our families. Early 1957, the coasts had dug. In 58, we had our Brenda. Doreen was a natural at motherhood. I treasured her advice and friendship. Plus, we had a great morning coffee going together with our neighbor, Pearl. 1959 saw the Colts add Dean to their family. When Brenda was about a year and a half, she held her breath and turned blue. What could I do but run to my neighbor, Doreen? Uh, 
who gave her CPR and got her breathing again, and uh, I went in an ambulance to take her to the hospital. Colts had three boys, we had three girls. I guess I haven't mentioned Candy yet, so I better say that. <laughs> <laughs> Candy arrived in 1960. Fast forward to 63. We moved to Kentwood. One bathroom wasn't enough for a person that was an only child and had four women to take care of. But Doreen and I continued our friendship. My dad and I had Sally in 65, and our mothers both died in the late 60s. We were there for each other. As our kids grew and our needs to be home every minute no longer became crucial, we found time a day each week to do something fun together. We loved to shop. A lot of it was window shopping because our funds were limited. We managed to walk some. We joined some exercise class at the Y. We could only go once a week, and uh, so we were always sore by the next session. <laughs> uh, in the early 70s, we took golf lessons at Rogers High School in, the, in, the, in their gym. It's a lot different when you get up on your course. <laughs> and uh, we tried some of the easy courses the following summer. We both loved the game, plus our husbands were golfers. Doreen scored well, I not so good, but the fresh air outside was marvelous. We decided we needed to join a golf league to hone our skills. We began golfing at the Pines Wednesday morning league. Doreen worked part-time, but Wednesdays was one of her days off. Later, I worked part-time, so we both took Thursdays off. And most every Thursday, if it wasn't raining, we were out on the golf course with our little coupon board. Uh, <laughs> uh, we took our lunch and, uh, and just had a great day. Um, our friendship was always wonderful. While we were enjoying each other, Doreen had a lot of other friends. And they probably considered her their best friend, too, because uh, she had no limit to her. She definitely was a giver. She loved her God, she loved her family, she loved her friends, and she also was a wonderful cook and shared that with friends. Our children were growing up and we were still doing things together. The four of us often would go away for the weekend with our coupon books uh, in, uh, to northern Michigan, and we also had a trip to French Lake. Uh, and did a little golfing there. Um, and um, it was retirement time soon. The Colts went to Texas during the winter the first couple of years. Then she tri they tried places in Florida and finally ended up in Venice only a couple of miles from where we were. More good times happened between us there. Together we celebrated so many of Don Colts's uh, March birthdays, and uh, they gave us something special then at the restaurant. We enhanced each other's lives. Uh, my Don died following a fall down the steps at home in 2007, and about four years later, Don Coates' dementia took him home. We spent some time down in Florida after there, at, and uh, at their modular home, and our friend, Fran Brinkus, joined us, and we just had a wonderful week. Again, good times were made. I know I am making this too long, because if I started going with the years beyond here, well, uh, we would be here instead of eating lunch in the other <laughs> So in ending, I would like you to know that I'm not going to mourn her death. The last five years, have been very difficult for Doreen. I was with her, and she was very brave, but with every phone call, happiness would relate from her voice. That's a big thing she taught me. She taught me when you answer your phone, you smile first and, and give them a good greeting. And 
I will always remember that. And she taught me to greet people the way God would want us to. It might be God calling, and she wanted to be ready. So she will always be in my heart. See why she loved her. I can see why you loved her. Thank you for those beautiful words. Barb doesn't want us to be late to lunch. <laughs> but I want to encourage you to tell stories about the way that Doreen touched your heart, made you a better person, made you laugh, the time that uh, you golfed with her baked with her, worshipped with her. I want you to go to lunch and have those stories around the table. So we have time for a few right now. So for a few, if you have a way that Barb touched your life, blessed your heart, made your life a little bit better, I'll bring a microphone to you, and I'll stop us when it's time for us to go to lunch. So we have time for a few. Does anyone want to tell a story here in this sacred space? The sacred hour about the way that Barb touched your heart. Huh? I'm sorry. Barb probably did also an extension, <laughs> uh, but Dory especially. Thanks, Tom. Uh, good, good morning. My name is Tom Noble, and I knew and my wife knew Don Dory for a long time. And uh, in later years now, uh, we knew them through church. And whenever I would see Doreen, she would always say, oh, there is my boyfriend. <laughs> and that made me feel special, that uh, she would uh, uh, greet me like that, and uh, she was a special gal. Just for the record, I know that Ruth is not here, so if there's more of that story, you can tell it at lunch. <laughs> Ruth knows. Ruth knows. I have a story about golf, and people here that golf with me know this. Um, I joined, uh, it, the golf group started here at church when Alan and I then joined later. And the one year, Doreen and I were partners. Well, both Doreen and I like to talk, and my friends know this, and we were quiet people. And so wherever we were on the golf course, that you could hear us, because we were either yelling or laughing or just having a grand time. The golfing, she was a better golfer than me, most everybody is. But, uh, you know, it was, it was so fun, and I remember it.
listener, and I need to um, represent the person. What should I guess? I worked with Bernie for a number of years. We worked in different departments, but when we did work together, she was an excellent nurse, very, very compassionate and caring person. And when in our free time, what did she talk about? Her family. And that's how I got to know them all. And then it kept going and going um, as the grandchildren came and so forth. But uh, I knew there were three boys. There was Doug, there was Debbie, and there was Steve. And uh, I did find them here a while ago. <laughs> uh, she thought so much of them. And uh, the one, I got to know Joni, our past class, later on. She had been just a wonderful daughter. Thank you. enjoyed golfing very much with Don and Doreen and th uh, two other couples. We'd go for weekend trips and just had a marvelous time. The one phrase that I remember from Doreen, and I will always on the golf course, every time we found a place where someone had dug up a big piece of sod, that was a beaver pellet. <laughs>
I have a feeling it's going to be a very interesting lunch. <laughs> poem I'd like to share with you. The author is unknown, but I could, I could surmise that the author is Dave and, and Dove and Dean. Your mother is always with you. Your mother is always with you. She's the whisper of the leaves as you walk down the street. She's the smell of certain foods you remember, flowers you pick, the fragrance of life itself. She's the cool hand on your brow when you're not feeling well. She's your breath in the air on a cold winter's day. She is the sound of the rain that lulls you to sleep, the colors of a rainbow. She is Christmas morning. Your mother lives inside your laughter. She is the place you came from, your first home, and she is the map you follow with every step you take. She is your first love, your first friend, even your first enemy. But nothing on earth can separate you. Not time, not space, not even death. Let us pray. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Loving God, we long for peace. Peace to leave Doreen with you. Peace to strengthen us for today and tomorrow. Peace with ourselves, with each other, and with you. Grant us that peace which the world cannot give. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. I leaned in close to Doreen. She could hardly keep her eyes open. She was still smiling and crying. And she was still so kind, so thankful. And I said, Doreen, what's your favorite song? She said, God will take care of you. She said, she sang this the hard times and through the good times and she believes it that it's true to her soul so I invite you to open up your hymnal to page 130 if you are comfortable or able and if you would like to stand let us stand and sing this song a testament to our faith and to our friendship and to that eternal love that sustains us God will take care of you page 130 Thank <laughs>
Almighty God. Into your hands we commend your daughter, Doreen Coates. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Her spirit now lives forever with you in glory. Her earthly body we commit to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Like I said, a meal has been prepared for you. Your presence is an honor. On behalf of the family, thank you so much for being here, for being a part of Doreen, for letting her be a part of you, for honoring her and everything about life that is good by your presence on this day. God bless each and every one of you. Let us give thanks for the meal that we are about to partake in. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for food to eat, family to celebrate, and faith to hold on to in times of grief and loss. Thank you for M&Ms and cookie cakes and pies that are sent home to bless someone who is in need. Bless the hands that have created this meal on this day. May the food and the fellowship bring strength, peace, and hope. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless and watch over you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace. So then go in peace. And may the God of all peace go with you.